Hey everyone, it's Joel JFP. We are here with our next project. We have this S13 behind us. A uh, customer has dropped it off. It has an RV20 swap in it. Um, they bought it, didn't really know what much was going on with it. They just kind of bought it the way it is. It only drove for them a few times and then it kept being unreliable. So I'm going to show you what we're dealing with with this car. Um, this would be a, what we would call a wiring nightmare um, or a rat's nest or just, yeah, not really. Looks pretty, but it somebody didn't do a very good job of it. So we're going to show you how, what we would do when we get cars like this. We see this all the time where somebody brings us a car and it's just not been put together properly. Wiring is just not very safe. It's catching fire. It's just very dangerous. We're going to show you what we do, how we go through it, how we decide what to do, what the next steps are, and how to not make it look like this. So I'm just going to kind of show you what we have here. So this is a RV20 swap. Somebody's done. Um, it is running off the stock computer. Somebody has slapped a really big turbo on it, top mount with a manifold, um, and everything's kind of just loosely put together. Like they did the fender mod that everyone does for these to give you more wheel, give you more wheel wheel clearance. Um, but everything is just kind of really poorly put together. Like here's your overflow. Is, I think this is from like a Dodge Ram. Um, or like some sort of Dodge they usually slip in the rad like that. Just like like stuff like this. Like people, if you're going to do stuff, then please do it properly. Um, there was no filter on it. It was just kind of chilling like this. Um, the wiring harness is from, since this is the RV stock wiring harness, somebody's just kind of slapped it in there. Um, when, you, when you see wiring like this, it's, it's kind of disconcerting. Um, yeah, this is bad. Like, like, please people, if you're gonna do swaps, d please just stop. Just put the wrench down. You're gonna cause a fire. Um, wait till you see we get to the back of this. So this, all this is just unnecessary. There's battery cables, there's wires that go to the firewall. Don't mind the leaves. Um, anytime you have a wire going through a firewall, you should have grommet on it. This is going to chafe. This is going to cause a fire. This is going to cause shorting. Um, this is kind of interesting because the, the wire harness for the wipers go through the engine harness. So somebody has just kind of ran some wires through the firewall. So we're going to fix all this, put it back to the way it's supposed to be. They just got the igniter chip mounted up on here. We're going to get rid of this. We're going with a full um, R35 coil pack bracket on the top with R35 coils. We're going to get rid of all that. Um, just clean all of this up and it's going to look so much nicer. There's so much redundancy on this where people have just kind of half-assedly slapped it together. Stuff like this, like zip ties holding on your throttle cable. Like, come on people, like, can we do a little bit better job? Then we get into the inside of the car. This is where it gets really fun. So, like I said, we're running the stock. This car was done with the stock ECM. Um, stock RB20, I opened it up. There's no chip in it, there's no tune on it. This is just put a big turbo on it, turn the boost up, and hope for the best. And this is the wiring harness that we have to deal with. There's all the wires coming through here. Um, there's a pile of gauge wiring that comes up here. We're gonna redo all of this. We're gonna show you how we sort through all this, um, how to clean it up, um, and put this basically back to factory so that when you turn the key on, the car starts, uh, it works and things are just like the way it's supposed to be, like a turnkey swap. Um, we'll get rid of all this, clean all this wiring up here, mount our boost controller up nicely. Now, they've added this. This is just a massive load of battery cables. Why this is like this, I, it's just this is, this is the wrong way to do it. There's one, two, three, four five large cables in there. Um, why? Well, somebody decided to put the battery in the back and then they put this battery disconnect in the trunk. Well, what, like, like, I don't even know. Like, what, just, just stop. This is your positive connection. Like, that's, that's, that's great. Perfect. Um, battery's just kind of chilling in here. I already got it disconnected. Um, fuel pump wiring was, this was interesting to see. So classic S13, the wires break off on the fuel pump hat. So this was their solution. They just kind of drilled a hole. I mean, at least they put a grommet on it. But then you get into the sending unit. And this is what is powering the fuel pump. 
This is uh, what I would call below average, quite below average. Um, the wires look like they actually got hot and look like they did. Um, it might have melted, it might have knotted, but it's like, and there now it's not even connected. So that was, that was their fix. So we're going to replace this. The top hat's still fine. So I've got a pass through bulkhead connector that we're going to get rid of these wires off here. And we're just going to do a new pass through through this top hat. Because these top hats are like stupid expensive to replace. So there's nothing wrong with it other than the wiring. So we'll get the wiring fixed up. We're going to get rid of all this battery cable. This is very redundant. All these relays that are just kind of mounted back here. This is not the right way to do it. We are going to fix all of this, clean all of this up. And I'm going to show you the process, how we go through, um, basically eliminate all, el eliminate all of that and bring it down to simplicity. Uh, I'll show you what we've got to replace all this stuff. Hi, Andrew. <laughs> edit so, edit. <laughs> so we've got a wiring specialties harness. Um, we're doing a Haltech uh, computer uh, with a can gauge. There's a computer. Um, we're doing the CAN gauge, so this will, um, uh, or sorry, this is the wideband. We have a CAN gauge. It's not in this box. It's in a different box. We're going to get rid of all the gauges and go with a simple uh, CAN gauge, so all of your information that you need to see will be just on one gauge. Uh, you can have four different, um, four different data streams on that. You can access it from your phone. It's a really nice unit we've done before. Um, these are the radium bulkhead connectors, or pass-through connectors for the fuel pump. These will go into, that's the connector side, and then this one will go in and seal on the top of the tank, and there's our fuel pump connections right there. So this will help us with the wiring back there. Here is our R35 coil bracket. Um, we're going to be putting the R35 coils on it. There's our little boots. Um, we're upgrading the injectors because anytime you're doing anything to these engines, you should be upgrading the injectors and not just running the stock ones and hoping for the best. We've got all our Haltech um, sensors for the computer. So we'll go through, I'll show you how we kind of figure out what things do, where they go, and how to sort them out. Um, yeah, so when this car came in, uh, this was also another special feature that we found on this. This was in, oh, where's that box? I gotta get that box. Where did I put that? This box, this tuck tape tin box, looks like like tin you find in your house for your heating and ventilation. This was in here, wrapped up in this bag, like that. So if that's your idea of um, wire tuck, please don't. Because now I have to fix this. So here we are, we've got a lot of the wiring taken out of it. Uh, we just have the engine bay to do. I've got the 
inside cleaned up. Here's all of the, most of the inside wire cleaned up. There's a lot of it. So we have the inside of the car pretty much stripped out. Um, all the cables that went back here, all cleaned out, cleaned out in the back. So we have just our fuel sending unit. Um, we're gonna go back to the factory connections. We're gonna use everything the way the car is supposed to be. Clean up all the stuff across the back that we don't need. We're gonna put all the back of it back to stock. And then up here, I have gotten rid of all the wiring, the big massive cable that was going through here. Here's just the factory engine harness. Uh, we have to route that back to the firewall. But everything is cleaned back up. I put all of the wires back to the way, well, aside from fix the radio harness. Just have to fix that. All the other intrusions they made into the harness, I have put back. Um, I just have to go through the steering column and put back the switch onto here. And we're gonna get this thing running back to the way it's supposed to be, like a factory car. Like, turn the key on, the car starts. None of this, they had this switch panel. Where did it go? They had this, like, so first off, your fuel pump, well, the engine computer controls that, so I don't know why you need a switch. Um, alien mode, well, the car looks pretty foreign, so there's alien mode. Fans, we're gonna get it all controlled by the computer. And lady mode is, well, that comes standard, I guess, with the 240. So, let's go back to the engine bay. We're gonna take the intake off, and we are gonna route all of the, we're gonna tuck the harness. I've taken the top half of the harness off already. We're gonna tuck it all underneath and have all the wires come up from the bottom so you don't see the harness and it looks really nice and really clean. Clean up all this cross firewall, get rid of all this useless idle air stuff that they have just plumbed. Essentially, they took the idle air and then they plumbed it onto this side of the throttle body. So it's kind of useless because if the throttle body's closed, you can't get any air from the side of the throttle body to route it in the intake, so it's kind of redundant. So we're gonna get rid of all that, clean up all that. Um, yeah, so let's get back here and do it.